I hope you all had a good weekend. Um, so we just, uh, <clears throat> Hanji sent the final bits of edits back from Speedball and she's put all of that in place, which has taken us the better part of a week and a half. Um, and Telmo is finalizing the technical edits. Um, I came in on the weekend and did some work to add a couple more things to the manual. Um, it should be finished by tomorrow afternoon. And that file we will send to Speedball and then it will go straight to the printers. Now, uh, <clears throat> one of the things that I was looking at was something, uh, for those of you who, have, who I've taught, I've talked about this in my classes, um, and it's something that I mentioned in the manual and decided that we needed to add something a little bit more detailed about. So I thought it would be good for you to see what this is because I'm sure a lot of you struggle with this issue and you don't realize what it is and you don't realize why you're struggling with it. So this is something I call the wiggle. So you know you're writing a letter I and you do a little wiggle. And that little wiggle is a problem because what you're seeing is you are allowing an optical illusion to influence the way in which you write the shape. So I'm going to show you what this little wiggle is. All right, the problem with this wiggle is it actually exists um, in two different places. When I say two different places, I mean it exists both on the uppercase and the lowercase. So, just get this at the right angle. Get the light. So, this is the line of universal beauty. Okay, so the line of universal beauty has, so I'm just trying to enlarge this a little bit, there we go. The line of universal beauty has a sixth and a sixth where you have a curve and a curve and the middle bit is a straight line. One of the problems with this is a lot of people see this and they think the line does this and this and somehow is connected that way. So they do this little wiggle, which is that. Now the first problem here is this is not on the 55. So the 55 is there. This is not on the 55. The other issue is in order for this to happen, you have to be facing the wrong direction. So if the nib is facing here, it's not on the 55. So that's the first sort of problem with the wiggle. So when you do a, when you do a, a majuscule, a line of universal beauty shape, and you do this, oh, oh. This, this is the 55 here. So obviously you're not on the 55. Goodness knows what angle you're on. <clears throat> so that's the, that's the issue with the line of universal beauty wiggle. The other wiggle happens when you do the small, the swelled stroke. So the swelled stroke has an indirect shape. And of course you have a curve here or rather, sorry, a curve here and a curve here. So what happened, what well, the tendency is to have this push itself underneath and to have this roll itself out. So what you end up with is this. As you can see, they're very similar in the kind of, in the intent of the line. And so this happens principally when you write the letter P. Most people do that. 
but that is wrong. What you should be getting is and one little line, press weight, stop lean, and you're going up and over and down and out. So this is on the 55 and it's up from here to here is a straight line and you have this and you have that this is not that that is a line here and something over here and something under there that is wrong so you have to be really conscious of what's happening here if you find this happening with your letter forms chances are um, you're not you're either not paying attention to the letter form or you're not paying attention to the nib where is the nib what direction is the nib facing so if the nib is facing the 55 the only way to get the wiggle is to actually make it when all you really want to do is just come down on the 55 and go back up on the 55 now the problem with the wiggle is it can happen in the M and it should be so I want you to compare these two shapes notice this is on the 55 this is on the 55 this is on the 55 and these are also on the 55 that's on the 55 that's on the 55 that's on the 55 but this is not on the 55 and consequently it kicks that out because it kicks it out look at the shape here let's just sort of hatch this in look at this look at that shape compared to this shape so these two lines look like each other but this has nothing to do with these two lines these three lines relate to each other because of the angle. Now, the bigger problem with this is, if you do this little wiggle, this little wiggle is going to kick out where the next letter starts. So if you're writing man, the A next to this M becomes a problem because the spacing is thrown off because you don't have an even amount of space here. What you're ending up with is a sort of teardrop-like volume. And so that's... That's why this little wiggle is, is so important to understand. <laughs> yes, it, it is hard, you know, you know, you, you really have to repeat it. I think one of the biggest problems with calligraphy, <clears throat> let's take this out of the holder. I think one of the biggest problems with calligraphy is, you know, I've, I've taught for so long. And sometimes I teach the same people, you know, they come to different types of classes. And you go over the same thing with them over and over and over. And you sit there and you think, how are you not getting this? And I've come to realize that, you know, it doesn't matter what the teacher tells you. It doesn't matter how often the teacher tells you. It doesn't matter how often you think the teacher is pestering you. And I know in a classroom that I, I pester my students because I shout at them and I tell them, sit up, do this, do this. It doesn't matter how many times I do that. If you are not ready to learn that little bit of information, you will just not get it. And sometimes it, it takes a lot of, of, of going over the same thing and you just can't see it. You just cannot see it. And of course the teacher stands there going, oh my goodness, rub some brain cells together and spark some electricity in your brain to, to remember what's going on. And you just can't see it because you're just not ready to see it or you're just not ready to see it at that level. This little wiggle is a really interesting problem. And it's a problem I see on a lot of people's work and they just don't see it because it's one of the more technical bits of minutia that you don't see until you have a certain level of technical capability. It's like the letter E, you know, that 
there are four different widths for the minuscule e. And if you don't know why, then you, you, you just, you're just guessing. The problem is when you see the hand, when you see, but the hand doesn't want. Yeah, Miriam, you know, I, I sort of agree with you on that, but I think it's, I think it's, 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 it's a deeper issue. It's not just about what you have in your head and what you're able to produce in your hand. I think understanding where the shape sits on the page is the issue. Um, because if you don't know where that line sits, and you know, this is something I always tell students, do you actually know what you're doing? So sometimes in a classroom, I ask people something and I say, do this, do this, do this. And everybody sits there and they go, yeah, yeah, yeah I can do it. And then you walk around and it's actually quite depressing because nobody's done what you've asked because you're not absolutely certain of what you're doing. And I think this is one of the things that I'm trying to get people to understand. Do you really know what you're doing or are you sort of guessing? Because if, if you say to yourself, Oh yeah, I, I know what I'm doing. That's a no. This is not a yes, no, maybe situation. This is a yes or no situation. Do you know exactly what you are doing? Yes or no? If the answer is no, then you need to spend some more time with the letters. What is the shape? Where does it work? How does it work? Where does it sit? Where is the nib? Is the nib facing the angle of the script? Because if the nib isn't facing the 55, you will get weight at an angle that you should never get weight. How many times do you go up and over around the letter? And, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. How many times do you get this happening? How many times do you get this happening? All right. So no, notice this is the axis of the script. So the 55 is here. Yeah. My nib is, that's the 55. Now look at where the nib is. The nib is here. So it's, it's not on the 55. So you're writing... Just zoom in a little bit more. Right. Do you, do you see the difference between this and this? So if you if you can see the difference between this, I want you to, to you know do a thumbs up or do a thumbs down or you know if you can't see it, let, let me see what you But the problem isn't that. The problem is the problem is how you're practicing. You know, you might think in your mind you know what is correct. So let's let let's see what the problem is here. Well, the first thing is the nib is in the wrong place. If the nib is not in the right place, it, it, it simply cannot produce the line. That 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 is it. End of story. This is not about Oh, I was feeling tired or the paper isn't working. It's, it's simply that the nib is not facing the direction of the script. End of story. So the first thing is check to see if the nib is facing the direction of the script. Because if the nib is facing the direction of the script, the only way... This is the only place that you can get pressure. Once you've rounded the turn. Now, if the nib is facing away from the direction, so here, it's now here, that is the only way that this can happen. You cannot get pressure up here if the nib is facing here because that's where the pressure is going to happen. There, there's no other way around it. If you are getting this shape, if as soon as you make the letter, you get this, two issues. First issue is, you're pressing too hard. 
first issue, you're pressing too soon. So you're supposed to go up and around and over and down. And once you've gone over and down, that's when you start pressing. You don't press at the, at the X height. Otherwise, you, you won't get a smooth transition. But if you're pressing at the X height and the nib is able to open like that in that direction, it's not facing the right direction. End of story. It doesn't matter what you think is in your head. It doesn't matter if you think you understand the script in your head. It doesn't matter that you think the problem is here to the hand. The problem isn't here to the hand. The problem is the nib. The nib is not in the right direction. How often do you look at the nib? Now, one of the problems with copper plate script is the nib moves as you're writing. So you have the 55 and it, it moves. It tilts back and forth over the 55. So I want you to do me a favor. I want you, when you are writing, to look at your nib. Look at where the nib is facing. Is the nib facing the 55? So take a reading pen, um, or preferably a reading pencil, a uh, red pencil, and have it next to you. Um, and as you're writing, I want you to try every couple letters. Just look at the pen. Look at the nib. I don't want you... Don't move your hand. Whenever you're ready to look at the nib, don't move your hand. Just pick up the pencil and then look at the nib and go... Is it on the 55? If it's not on the 55, put a little X above where you're writing. Don't continue the letter because obviously you're making a mistake and you don't want to reinforce the mistake. So continue writing again and then do it again. So do this for a page and see how you manage on a page to get, at l to get only two or three little X's. You'll probably end up with a page full of red X's because you are not aware of what is happening with that nib. And that is the problem. We are not aware of what is going on with the nib. It doesn't matter that you think you know the script. It doesn't matter that you think that the problem is your hand can't do what your brain is telling you to do. The problem is if the nib isn't facing the right direction, the tool simply cannot make the stroke that you want it to make. Anyway, so that's the little wiggle. So just be careful of the wiggle. Um, and have a good day. And I will let you know once we send this stuff off to the printers because tomorrow is when we send it off to the printers. And, um, and then we'll find out what the exact ship date is. I am still working on the pre-order page on my website because the financial, the financial side of it is not that straightforward, uh, but it should be up soon. Uh, if you're really desperate to order, you can pre-order from John Neal. Um, or you can wait for my page to come up. All right, so hope you're well, and uh, hope you all have a good day, and I will, I will speak to you guys soon.